Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Brass Basics Challenge. I'm really grateful. I'm really thankful that you're joining me for this. I hope we have a little bit of fun. I hope I can help you improve your brass playing, your trumpet playing a little bit. Um, so let's get started. All right. So for today, I'm going to share with you basically three exercises. It's kind of one exercise, but it's going to be in three different parts. So if you're following along with your workbook, um, you should have three spots there to add to this challenge, three assignments to write in there. My intention is not only to help you with our secret excerpt, which I know you all know, but the secret excerpt at the end of the week is not only to help you for that, but these fundamental aspects, these exercises that I want to share with you have not only helped me in this excerpt, but they have helped me in general with my playing. So that's my intention is that at the end of this week, at the very least, one, two, three of these exercises really start to make a positive impact in your long-term playing. So let's get started. The first thing, the first exercise, it's uh, maybe not a trumpet thing, but it's important. Uh, you might say, well, this isn't brass playing, but I believe it is. The first thing I want you to do is to sit, become still, and do a few breathing exercises. If we as brass players try to incorporate technique, musicality, flow, ease, grace on top of something that's not simple in a physical way, we are going to run into problems and that our trumpet playing is built upon something that's complex and varied. I hold, I don't hold, I hold, I don't hold. So the first exercise I want to ask you to do is to, um, to sit and remember zero. Now you may do this in a few different ways. If you don't know the Wim Hof breathing technique, I would invite you to try that. It's a three cycle of breathing. You can find him on YouTube, W-I-M-H-O-F. Uh, and Wim Hof does these things is great for not only getting the mind right, for thinking, but it also helps you remember zero. We want this air. There are three rules that I want to share with you. The air must come into the body freely. It must come out of the body freely. And you can't use too much pressure. So we're starting on the first of those two. So either do a Wim Hof exercise or simply notice your butt in the chair. Feel grounded. Feel the full weight of you in the chair. Good posture. This wind apparatus, this path here from from here all the way to our abdomen where we support the, the diaphragm exhaling the air. We create space. This engagement needs to be completely free. And if we don't remember what that is every day, it's easily to complicate it. So a couple breaths, you may think of the head voice woo, to raise the soft palate. You may stick the tongue out of the mouth, perhaps with a, a mouthpiece like to get that freedom. You can hear my voice gets a little bit deeper when I do that. And it relaxes all of this. That's really important. That's your first exercise. Two or three minutes of that minimum. All right. Easy enough. Good. Now, as we go into exercise two, where we start incorporating some playing, you will need a metronome. And I want to share with you a few criteria that I'd love for you to think about when you're playing. In this simple exercise, I want you to think musically. Even though it might be only a half note, I want you to think of where is the half note going, how are you releasing it, and how are you starting it. We're looking for good timing and good response. If the response that you're looking for doesn't happen, you might consider a lip buzz. I'll talk about that in a second. And then the last thing I would ask you to do is think, what is the shape of the air that we're using? And I'll get to that in a second. Uh, actually, the fourth thing is no forcing. Okay, so here's your exercise number two. You're going to put your metronome at quarter note equals 60. And this is one exercise with about four variations. So hear me out and then I'll demonstrate a few of them for you. The metronome is at 60 and the exercise that I'm asking you to do is a chromatic scale playing a half note on each bar 
starting on low G breath attack. This to me is at the fundamental of production and ease. Without the tongue, we need to have good coordination between the air and the lips and getting it to respond when we want to. All while incorporating exercise number one where the air is free, not too much pressure, in and out. Okay, so here we go. First one, on beat one, chromatic scale starting on low G, one note per bar. One, two, Okay, if for some reason one of those starts happening like this, like that, then I invite you to try a little bit of lip buzzing on that note, keeping the tongue forward in the mouth, not tonguing that note, just breath attacking it. Just to get a little contact in here, okay? So that's the first variation. That's the sort of the theme, if you will. The second variation, and this is where it seems, oh, this is simple but our job is to copy this form into different parts of the beat. So simply now, I want you to do the same thing, but now you're gonna play it on beat two. Obviously you're thinking of the four beat pattern and breathing on perhaps four of the previous bar and playing a breath attack on beat two. One, two, three. <sighs> so on and so forth. Now obviously beat three could feel a little bit like strong one, uh, like, like, a, like a one, but now I want you to play it on four and also do the same exercise on the and of four. All of these variations, whether it's on beat two, beat four, on the and of four, should feel as free and as straightforward and coordinated as the beat one. So I'll show beat four, one, two, three and so forth and here's the end of four notice that I'm not having any kind of rhythmic movement because of where it falls in the bar one two three that is simple for you if it's not it is paramount that you develop a good simple coordination with that so here's some other variations and bonus rounds um, if you if that feels good for you going all the way up to middle G it doesn't matter if you're doing it on B flat trumpet or C trumpet although our excerpt will be on C it doesn't matter if that feels good for you and you're getting good consistency take it up one more octave to a G on top of the staff concert F on top of the staff Pick any of the variations you like, but try to expand upon that. The other thing that I want to share with you is, is what, what makes this difficult? For some people that maybe have inconsistent response, um, and I think one of the things is that we don't have a good shape of air, or we don't have a good sort of coordination of the air transferring in and then transferring out. And I want you to think about this, you know, where... Where does the note happen? And for example, so the, the air comes in and at some point here switches over to out and then we go out. And for me, I like to think of connecting with the note somewhere here. So I like that even though this, from, this whole thing represents about half a second or whatever it might be, it could be very quick. Um, but the idea is that there's no straight lines there's no sort of sharp points of like a direction change. It's very fluid. And so if the, if the exercise playing on a different beat feels a little stiff, I invite you to think about this. Did your shape of your air become, uh, 
like that. We always, I always want to go for this in terms of momentum of my air, whether you connect here or here, or maybe even in here, maybe it doesn't matter so much, but we have to have that nice fluidity. Okay. So that is basically today's uh, lesson breath attacks with variations, finding zero at the beginning of your day and at the beginning of this exercise. I hope that helps. I will see you tomorrow where we start integrating the tongue. Thanks so much. Bye.